Hey Tim, what did you just see? Alright, so like 20 years ago, 15, 20 years ago, that was normal to see fighter jets fly by. But uh, I thought I heard something rumble. I was right next to the 8530. And uh, it flew right, where to fly? Right over us, it didn't it? It flew way out there. Oh, okay. I can hear something going on, rumbling over there yet. Yeah. Okay, so I kind of thought this would be appropriate for a 95 degree day where I'm going to be making hay. Um, a little bit of snow. But anyway, uh, yeah. The reason for the fighter jets flying over was because Donald Trump was over at his golf course, the Trump National, over in Bedminster, New Jersey. And uh, he... Uh, I guess he needed protection. Uh, what, what I saw was an F-18 flyover. Anyways, I'm reading Facebook this morning, and apparently there were several of them that it came ripping down from the the nether regions of the air, like way the hell up there, um, and uh, they descended upon an unauthorized takeoff or landing from a small airport that's only like four or five miles away. So I figured I'd clear that up. I know exactly what it is. And now you get to see the rest of the video where I explain, um, yeah, your life or death. It's your choice. Ding. It did ding. Okay. I got a big chunk of shit I got to send through this baler. Look at this. This is what you call one hell of a pile of crap. It got wadded up in the in the tether, or not the tether. Ugh. Got wadded up in the back in the the rake. My brain ain't working here right now. So you kind of got to be careful what you're doing. Ugh. You believe that? It's eating it. There it goes. You just kind of want to be careful when you do stuff like that. Anyway. Alright. Oh, 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 oh. These IVTs are awesome on a baler. I don't care what anybody says. If you think that IVT transmissions are shit, you're fucking stupid. Sorry. <laughs> I mean, they're just awesome. I mean, you just put that stick forward and boom, you're going. I mean, it's, it's really just a hydrostatic transmission that runs different gears on a power shift transmission. It's just a hybrid thing. It's really cool. Um, but anyways, that's not what the topic of today's video is. So this morning I was talking to a friend of mine who lives out in Ohio, northeast Ohio farmer. Um, just a young guy, maybe 23 years old I believe he is. Uh, and he has a channel. I was talking to him on Facebook because I do that from time to time. I'll talk to different people and I like him. He's a good guy. So anyway, uh, here's the thing. <laughs> he tells me that he almost flipped over a tractor yesterday. I believe it was yesterday. Not that it matters. I'm a day or two behind now. Uh, and I was like, you know, I get asked this stupid question all the time. Why do I use such big tractors to do little jobs? Well, my response to that is, <laughs> go ask one of the guys that was killed doing a big job with a little tractor what he would what he would prefer. But the problem is, you can't you can't talk to those dead people because they're dead from that. Um, you can do a big job with a little tractor, and but you cannot do a little a big job with a little tractor. So big job. Big tractor, little job, big tractor. It's better to go big and go home at the end of the day than it is to try and do something uh, with a smaller tractor. You know, it's like if you're ill-equipped downstairs or down south of the belt line, and your new girlfriend she starts laughing at you, you know, because you're just inadequate. It's the same damn thing. You take a little tractor and you go and do a big job, it's inadequate. Whether it's inadequate in the weight of it, the size of it, or even the ability of it, meaning horsepower. So, people ask me, why do you have these big tractors doing little, little jobs? Well, big tractors ride smoother. I have uh, 
uh, enough horsepower to do whatever the hell I want to do, like this machine. I mean, I'm bailing at eight miles, a little back somewhere around eight miles an hour here. I can go faster yet. I'm bailing comfortably. You don't see me bouncing around in the cab like you used to with the 8120. You're not hearing the draw on the engine when you're going around, you know, going up hills and things. So, yeah, it's a big tractor and it's doing a big job. This baler behind me weighs like 25,000 pounds with a bail in it. It's heavy. Put all that twine and everything, it's just heavy. I don't want to get killed. I was almost killed on the 5020 and the first big baler that I used to run. Uh, and it just almost jackknifed on me, and if it would have been a second more, I would have went over and it probably would have crushed me and killed me. So I decided then that it's just a dumb idea to try and run big equipment with little tractors and just get bigger, bigger tractors, because the implements you pull behind you are always getting bigger. So, you know, it's just the way it is, okay? Um, dead men tell no tales. That's just... It's just the way it is. Uh, yeah. So, what would you rather do? Burn a little extra fuel, be comfortable, and go home at night? Or attempt to cheapen out on a little tractor and, uh, you know, maybe save a couple dollars worth of fuel but risk your life when you come to the end of your driveway and there might be cinders left over from the snowfall, you know, after they put cinders on after snow and it slides your carcass sideways and the next thing you're over on your side and dead. Well, I'll burn a little extra fuel for that. I like to live. You know, living is good. It's always been good to me. I've never really had a problem not living because I'm still living. Now I'm just yammering on, but uh, yeah. So that's why I run big tractors. That's it. It's that simple. It's that simple. I'm sure anybody with some age on them, even the young guys, knows someone that has either been severely hurt, knows or has heard of someone that has been severely hurt or even killed by using a small tractor. Uh, that's why I won't use a Kubota tractor. I have a Kubota tractor that sits in the shop there. I won't use it. It's too small for anything other than digging with that little dinky backhoe that I've got on the back of it. That's it. That's all it's good for. Uh, you know, you buy a small tractor, you're limited. It's just, you're just limited. There's nothing, you know, you're not going to go to the field and work all day. They're rough, they're noisy, they vibrate, they're, they're just not what a big tractor is. So, anyway, starting the next field here, I'm going to take the second second outside round. We're going to be doing little bales today. Yes, little bales. The uh, reason we're going to be doing little bales is I need, uh, I got some obligations that I need to fulfill and it takes little bales to do that. So three wagon loads of little bales and then uh, we'll be, you know, that's that. You know, just, you know, I'll put the rest in the and, uh, big ones until the need arises for more little bales. Ooh. But everything's working good on the baler so far. I uh, just made a knot. Boom! About to drop one off. The last bale weighed 1,504 pounds, so that's pretty good. Six minutes of me hammering on about people getting killed with little tractors. That's why I want to sell the 4230. It's a great little tractor. It's running a hay rate right now. I mean, I've seen people trying to hook big shit to it, and I gotta yell at them. So uh, I don't like yelling at people, and I because I really don't want people to die. It's just me, and uh, yeah. 